Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm Winnie from Zoldo Constructs where we specialize in original abstract artwork, handmade crafts, and home decor. Today I want to share with you how to create something I like to call a coffee table centerpiece. And it can also double as wall art. But we're going to make this out of clothespins. Now, because Christmas is not that far away, I am going to be using the colors of red and green so I can go ahead and start getting into some of that Christmas decor. So we'll jump right into that. But before we do, let me let you see a picture of my good buddy, Zoe and Lulu. To make our clothespin coffee table centerpiece, you can see the first thing, of course, we'll need are our supplies. And we'll start off with clothespins. These are uh, two packs of clothespins, a hundred in each pack, that I picked up at Walmart. In addition to that, we will need a foundation for our clothespin wreath. And this is just simply uh, the metal frame for a wreath. This is a 14 inch frame. Now they do come in a variety of sizes. In addition to that, we're going to need paint. Before we start, first we need to determine exactly how many clothespins we're going to need for this project. Now I like to take the wreath and divide it into two sections. You can see that there is uh, two rings here I call the top and two rings here I call the bottom. This section here can hold eight to nine clothespins, okay? We'll need that many for each of the sections. And there are six sections as we go around the wreath. So six times nine gives us 54. Then these two sections here around the bottom um, can hold up to 14 clothespins. Again, six sections. So six times 14 gives us 84. So we'll need a total of 54 plus 84, giving us 138. And just to be safe, I probably will go ahead and use 140. So, now of course, if you're using a larger ring, you will need more clothespins than that number. Now, I have, as I said, decided to use uh, these two colors. So therefore, and I'm going to split the colors evenly. So therefore, I will need to paint 70 of the clothespins red, and then another 70 of them I will paint green. So we'll start by opening the clothespins and taking them out. Now, I have seen some people say that they just place their clothespins like this and just separate them out and paint them that way. And that's very quick and very easy. I have found that that method didn't work quite so well for me. So what I have decided to do instead is to take the clothespins and go ahead and place them on the bottom portion of the ring, just, just as you see me doing here. And then the reason that I like to do that is because it allows me the opportunity to go ahead and paint all parts of the clothespins at one time and then so that cuts down on my dry time okay so you can see i've just placed the clothespins on the bottom part of the wreath just haphazardly in any order because this is not the way they're going to be in the finished product I just put them on this way so that I could paint them more easily. Okay, this is my makeshift uh, table to do the painting on. Now you can see that I have placed all of the clothespins on the reef ring and I'm going to start out turning it upside down like this. And the reason for that is so I can go ahead and paint the bottoms of the pen. So I have the red, I'm going to start out with the red, apple red spray paint and add 
as you can see, I just go ahead and give it a good coating. And you don't have to be so careful. Let me pick this up. That's another good thing because you can, you know, you're not painting at all, so you can just hold it up any kind of way that you would like. So you can see that I am painting inside. Now with the methodology um, described previously, where they just left them on the, on the hook, it was really difficult to get inside the pins. This way, oops, I got some paint on myself. But this way you get a really good coating on the paint, on the uh, clothes pins. And I, I should have had on gloves, but that's all right. And see the thing about doing it this way, you can just simply flip it over because now that is going to be the bottom part that's not gonna be seen. It has been about an hour and the red clothespins appear to be dry. So we'll just simply pop these clothespins off. Just like that, line them to the side. We'll use them later. So now we've got all the red clothespins taken off. We're ready to open the second pack of clothespins. Another pack of 100. We will do the same thing. We will take these pins and place them on the ring. Just any anywhere. and we'll be ready to paint them. Okay, now we have the next set of clothespins on the ring, ready to be painted with the green color. Now we'll start just as we did before. We'll go ahead and hit the bottom. trying to go in between the pins as much as we can. Now, when we make this coffee table centerpiece, these pins will be sitting very close together. So if we are unable to get all of the, in between the pins, that won't make any difference because they won't be seen. Okay, got all that going. Now, get this part. And you can see this goes fairly quickly. The, the thing that takes the most time is actually drying. And then, of course, putting all the pins and moving them around, that can take some time. And I, I did cut a lot of that out of this video. But, probably on average with the drawing time and everything, it would take maybe two and a half hours to make one of these. So now we have the green pens all painted and dry on the rim. So next we just simply have to remove them from the rim and then we'll be ready to start the assembly. Now we have all of the clothes pens, the green and the red. So we are ready to begin assembling the coffee table centerpiece. So we take the clothespins and we fit it, we clamp them over these first two rings to form the top. And we will use about eight to nine, usually nine in each section. And so you can see we're just kind of arcing around 
And of course, since this is a curve, there's going to be more space, have to be more space at the back so we can make a nice curve in the center. So we've got two, four, six, eight, and we'll put one more in here. And we can come back later and kind of line them up just to make sure that there is a good arc. Next, we'll, we'll start the next section and put in the green ones. And so we will continue this process all around. I like to go ahead and do the top first and then the bottom after that is finished. Now, with this, you'll do a little adjusting as you go along. If you find that these are back too far, you might want to, you might need to pull them up. But you're going to make a nice circle here in the middle. So we got two, four, six, eight, and one more green. And then we'll just go back to the red and continue until we complete the entire circle. Now to complete this last section, I just wanted to point out to you, at least I found for me, it works better if I start on one side and just continue around rather than putting some over here because then when you get in the center part, it's really difficult to fit them in. But if you just try to place them, always trying to make sure you've got that arc in the center. Now here I'm putting them kind of wide apart, but of course, as I've said, we will need to make adjustments after we get them all in place. So here I've got two, four, six, seven, eight, And so I'm probably going to need to just kind of smooth them over a little bit so we can fit all nine in the section. And sometimes I have found that they can get really bunched up and you can't quite fit all nine in here. And occasionally I've had to just do eight. But let me see if I can fit this ninth one in here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be able to, to get that. And I, I might have to come back and work with that a little bit more to get it straight. But uh, next, we're ready to begin the bottom. And so what I like to do is just to simply, if I've got red here, then I like to alternate. So I will take the clip and clip it over these two bottom rows going up so that it meets the top row, okay? But we did the top row first because we're gonna have that on top of the bottom row of pins. So we're gonna do the same thing starting here from the edge. And I think we said we probably will fit about 18. Now you notice this one, it still didn't get painted completely, but that's all right because it's going to fit right in here and no one will ever see that it's not completely painted. And so of course with these, because um, they are painted, we can go back later if we want to create uh, a centerpiece to match the colors of another season. We can simply go back and repaint and reuse. And it's not quite as tight as it is on the top, but around the bottom, we typically put in about 14 pins. So, so far I put in two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, so two more. And the same kind of thing. You're just gonna go back through and tighten up the spaces. So we've got all the reds in there. So now we're gonna come in and do uh, 14 greens along the bottom. And we will just continue this process, alternating between the green and the red, 
going all the way around. And when we do that, we, and you know, straighten out the pins and make sure everything looks nice. And then we will have a completed um, Christmas oriented coffee table centerpiece made of clothespins. So here is a finished product and you can use this in a number of ways. Uh, for example, I just have this little small Christmas tree so you could place that in the center of the wreath to be perhaps you were having a Christmas party or something of that nature. Have some a vase of flowers or something that you would put inside would make a lovely centerpiece or just to add garland. If you decided you wanted to use this piece as wall art, you can, of course, just place it on the wall as it is. Or for the Christmas season, perhaps you want to add a nice bow. Here I just had some wreath mesh and I just kind of wrapped it around there. And so it makes for a very interesting art piece. So there are any number of things that you can do with these centerpieces. And as I have said before, you know, you can change up the color and paint any color to match the season. And then you can add any additional adornment you choose. As we close out this video, I am again showing items from Zolu Constructs product line. If you would like to purchase the centerpiece created here today, rather than constructing your own, I have placed a link below this video. And finally, if you have enjoyed watching this video, please, 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 please click the subscribe button and also ring the bell so that you will be notified when new videos are released. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.